This is a 2020 Subaru Outback, and this is the Touring XT. And today, we're going to review it. Today we're working with our friends at Luther White Bear Subaru in beautiful White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, guys in, a in a Ride. And say, Nate, what are we taking a look at today? Today we are taking a look at the 2020 Subaru Outback Touring XT trim level. That's right. But say, before we do, if you want to keep up to date with all the new cars, trucks, and SUVs, and you want to know how to use all of the infotainment systems that are built into these new cars, and you like cool collector car stories, Take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that bell notification up above so you never miss a video. That's right. So what do you say, Nate? Let's, Let's go, go for a ride. ride. All right. We might have found a car, Rob, that has everything oh, on it. We, okay. we might have. There's always some component missing. So, um, man, what what a nice drive. Um, comfortable. Uh, it, it, it handles really well. Um, when I'm driving, I had the adaptive cruise control on. Of course, that's fully adaptive. Anyways, um, very easy to get in and out of. You know, this has got a slightly elevated uh, stance, mm -hmm. and we'll show you that, but it's really easy to get in and out of the front and in and out of the back. In terms of how everything is laid out, um, it, it's it's it, it's right at your, uh, your finger touch here. Um, it has a large 11.6 inch screen um, and makes it very easy uh, to get at all sorts of things. Right. But also your voice command. Your voice command, you know, does, of course, your navigation, um, but it also does your climate and then your media. So um, that, that, that makes it really nice as far as getting to things in the cap and when you can get to a lot of it from voice command right and it worked really well as maybe one of the first systems I stepped in and pressed voice command spoken to it and it's not exactly what it's supposed to Wow! didn't uh, say I can't understand you everything's so nice right. uh, in terms of parking this is easy to park uh, you know this has got that front 180 degree view camera that you can turn on mm -hmm. and then uh, you can see what's exactly in front of you so you know that you're not gonna tap a bumper or get too close to a curb or something and then uh, it does have some fixed guidelines some fixed points okay to give you some uh, distance reference and then uh, when you're backing up of course it has a rear view camera with dynamic swivel guidelines and static guidelines that stay on at the same time um, that's really nice so parking not an issue easy as it can get on a car wow. and we're gonna find a spot here to pull over and let Rob drive so uh, but what a beautiful ride I just I absolutely love this and it's just it's loaded with technology and I will show you that on the uh, in interior review but sadly I shall have to crawl in the back and let Rob drive <laughs> Okay, my turn, and uh, first off, acceleration. Wow, that's uh, pretty quick. The fit and finish in here are just top notch. Yeah, the on. colors are fantastic. I mean, really heavily padded and soft cushioned areas all over. You know, it's really famous for its eyesight uh, uh, driving and, and safety technologies. But one of the cool things Nathan's going to tell you about is this little black a shiny strip right on top of the dashboard here and now that's what is that called Nathan uh, so that is driver focus technology and what that does is it's got a camera in it that actually reads the driver's face <laughs> and it will you can set your seat in your mirrors at least those two things I know right 
Uh, so when you get in and it recognizes your face. I thought it did like heating presets and stuff like that. So when you get in, the car is actually recognizing you and going right. ahead and setting your steering wheel, your, or not your steering wheel, because it's manual. No, because that's uh, manual. But your seats and some a lot, a lot of your uh, uh, preferences that you typically uh, would, would program in. Now it does have programmable seats over here, but that's really cool that it reads your face and it can it can set up to five different people yep. your personal preferences. So that's that's really cool. So. Next up, we're going to dive a little bit more into that, but next up, my exterior review, and then after that, Nathan will give you a review of the inside, and we're also going to cut a completely couple of separate videos. One will be fast takes, and they're going to be a short video of how to do just a few simple little um, programmable things like pairing your phone, using Apple CarPlay, and that type. The other will be a full in-depth of how to use all of the built-in features of the infotainment uh, system in this car. So uh, that link will be up top and in our description below, so don't miss it. Stay tuned. Based on its dimensions, the 2020 Subaru Outback is classified as a midsize SUV, but when viewed from the side, you're most likely thinking the Outback looks like a traditional wagon. Well, while the 2020 Outback sure looks a lot like the old one, it continues to be a great alternative to larger, heavier, and more costly crossovers and SUVs. Now in its second decade of production, the Outback continues to improve, adding more tech and safety with each generation. For 2020, the Outback has been completely redesigned, but is still one of the most versatile, capable, and comfortable vehicles in its class. This is the 2020 Subaru Outback Touring XT and it's available in seven trim levels. There is the base that starts at 26,645 and then it goes all the way to Touring 37,345, the Onyx Edition XT, then there's a Limited XT, and then finally this is the Touring XT trim level at 39,695 to start. This 2020 Subaru Outback Touring XT has an MSRP of 41,084 and it's presented here in cinnamon brown. Now, out front you do have LED steering responsive headlights, LED daytime running lights, LED fog lights, you have the body colored bumpers with black rub strip and you have the brush chrome look lower bumper trim. This also does have the black grille inserts with the chrome surround and you have the chrome bar featuring the prominent Subaru logo. You also do up top you have the EyeSight driver assist technology. It has two speed windshield wipers and it has windshield wiper de-icers. This vehicle is powered by a 2.4 liter double overhead cam, direct injection, turbocharged, intercooled aluminum alloy, 16 valve, four cylinder, horizontally opposed boxer engine with dual active valve control system, producing 260 horsepower and 277 foot pound of torque. It is driven with a linear Tronic CVT and it has Subaru's symmetrical all wheel drive. Let's take a look along the side. Okay, along the side we see it does have 18 by 7 inch alloy, uh, aluminum alloy wheels that have a black machine finish and they are wrapped in uh, 22560R18 100H all season tires. Now this also does have four wheel anti-lock brakes with 12.4 inch front rotors and 11.8 rear rotors and they are all ventilated does have a four-wheel independent suspension with McPherson struts in the front and double wishbone and stabilizer bar out back. Now you do see it does have the black wheel well moldings and it does have the black lower rocker panel molding and I like the satin finish power folding uh, side mirrors and they do have the integrated turn signals as well. You also do have the keyless entry system where you, all you have to do is, and I did it, I touched the sensor, and it does have illuminated uh, entry. This also has the body color door handles and it has the chrome window surround and up top you see the roof rack rails. This also does have a power tilt and sliding moonroof as well 
and I like, I really do like the black cladding along the bottom with the Outback name right at the bottom there. It makes it look a lot more uh, beefy and a lot more ready to tackle the off-road. So let's take a look around back. Okay, out back you do have the body colored spoiler and yes, that's some Canadian geese flying overhead. <laughs> uh, it also has a hands-free rear lift gate. It has a rear wiper de-icer, has the rear vision camera, LED tail lights, has the black bumper rub strip, and uh, you do have the nice brushed um, chrome look lower bumper trim as well. Now, cargo capacity behind the second row, as you see it here, is 33 cubic feet. Now, cargo capacity with the second row folded, so up to the front row, is 75.7 .7 cubic feet. Cargo area length at the floor, up to the front seat to 75 inches. And as you see it here, cargo length from here to the back of the second row seats is 42 inches. Cargo area width at the belt line, right up here, 45.2 inches and the cargo width at the wheel housing inside here between the wheels 43.3 inches and the box height is 32.1 inches with a liftover height from the ground to here 28.4 inches now underneath the floor is an actual size full spare tire and it has tools and a little bit of storage area as well now I want to talk to you about some of the safety systems on this vehicle. We talked about it earlier. There's the EyeSight driver assist technology. You have hill descent control, vehicle dynamics control, traction control, uh, active torque vectoring, driver focus, uh, uh, distraction mitigation system. We talked about that in the drive. It has reverse automatic braking, blind spot detection with lane change assist, and rear cross traffic alert plus loads, loads more safety features. Subaru is really becoming known for all the safety features they have built into their cars. Let's take a look and talk about the dimensions. Okay, so front track is 61.8 inches, rear track 62.8 inches. Overall width, 73 inches. Overall total length, 191.3 inches. And it does ride on a wheelbase of 108.1 inches and it does have a ground clearance of 8.7 inches. Now, its approach angle is 18 degrees, its departure angle is 22 degrees, and its breakover angle is 19 degrees. Base curb weight on this vehicle, 3,937 pounds. It does have a maximum towing capacity of 3,500 pounds, and it has a fuel tank capacity of 18 and a half gallons. Now, on our spade scale, safety being first, uh, it is a top safety pick from IIHS for crash worthiness, and it has a five-star rating from the National Highway Safety Traffic Administration. Performance, zero to 60 in 6.3 seconds, quarter mile, 14.8 seconds at 96 miles per hour, and braking, 70 to zero, 176 feet. Okay. Appearance. Uh, it's sized like an SUV, but the Outback has a distinct wagon look. It's that traditional Outback look that's been around for years, and it's really, really appealing. Dependability. New car warranty, three years, 36,000 miles. Powertrain limited warranty, five years, 60,000 miles. And one of my favorites, wear item limited warranty that applies to brake pads, transmitter batteries, wiper blades, three years, 36,000 miles. Economy, 23 city, 30 highway, 26 combined, and it has a highway cruising range of 510 miles. Now, in summary, the Outback is, is it perfect? Well, no, but it comes close if you're looking for a safe, comfortable, and very practical vehicle. There's great visibility, excellent handle, handling, all-wheel drive on all trim levels, lots of cargo space, and it's loaded with tons of safety. So, that's the exterior review. Now it's time to check in with Nathan as he shows us all the interior gadgets and bells and whistles and technology that's built into this 2020 Subaru Outback Touring XT. If you haven't already done so, please take a second to give us a thumbs up and click that subscribe button down below. So what do you say, Nate? Over to you. Yes, I'm coming. <laughs> 
And stepping inside the 2020 Subaru Outback here with the Touring XT trim level. I love this uh, two-tone brown combination. I, I just I think that looks really sharp with the white contrasting stitching. And uh, you do have auto up and down all four windows. And you have your lock on lock buttons, your mirror controls, and then your power folding mirror button right there if you want to do it manually. Um, and then, of course, you have a, this nice chrome uh, door handle piece along with the uh, plastic trim that goes around here and then sort of the, uh, the uh, satin uh, chrome look right there on the trim piece. You do also have a two-person uh, physical memory setting right there, although you can do it another way, and I'll show you that on the interior review. Um, you have a cup holder down here, and you have some extra storage down in here. Now, this is one of your 12... Armin Kardon uh, speakers for the sound system. And coming down to the seat here, these are very comfortable seats. And you do have a manually extending uh, thigh supporter right down here. And then the driver's seat is a 10-way power. Hey, okay, coming up over here, you got your nice foot rest down here along with your foot feet. And then coming up here, you have nice access panel here to your fuses, which I really, really, really like. Okay. All right, and coming up here, you have your uh, trunk release right here. You have your dashboard uh, dimming uh, switch right here. It's rotary. And then you can turn your automatic tailgate on or off with a push of this button right here. Okay. Your trip reset button is located right up here. And then it is a manually tilt and telescoping uh, steering wheel. Let's hop inside. All right, so let's give it a start. It is, of course, a push start. Love the dials going around. Got a little welcome sign going on. All right, over on the left side of the steering wheel, um, you have all of your media control buttons right here, including your voice command button. Then underneath that, you have your phone hang up and your phone on. But right below that, you have three buttons to control your driver's information screen. And then you have on the right, you have all of your adaptive cruise control, including your gap setter, cruise control on or off, and then your lane keeping assist and lane centering uh, button right here. You do have a heated steering wheel button right underneath here. And then, of course, you do have paddle shifters. Now, this does have auto lights uh, and also auto high beam and low beam. So uh, if you just put on auto and flick the switch to bright, uh, this is a push forward, then the auto uh, bright and dim lights will come on too. All right. Now, um, in terms of the dashboard itself, you, of course, you've got an analog RPM and speedometer, as well as an engine temp and a fuel gauge. And then in the middle, again, you have this nice digital display. So you do have a few screens up here that you can flip through and change, and we'll go over more of those in the detailed video. Um, and then your adaptive cruise settings, some of your safety settings in here, warnings show up in here. And then you have things like a gear selector, tells you whether your uh, auto start stop is on or off, your eyesight safety systems on and then if it's cold enough it gives you a little uh, um, like a snowflake emblem to um, let you know that it's kind of cold out and be careful driving and then you have trip A which shows up and then you can flip it to a trip B with the trip button which is I showed you earlier okay uh, that being said let's move on over to the infotainment screen now this is a beautiful screen it is 11.6 inches and it's orientated as just like your phone would be uh, and that's really that's really nice it, um, it is almost all touch control now the, the there are a few physical buttons and let's go over those first first of all your hazards is this uh, sort of silver looking button up here okay down here you've got a physical uh, volume button which you can push on or off okay and if you push and hold it's the power button to turn the whole stereo off. Over here, you've got a tune button, okay? And if you're on a radio, of course, that'll change the stations, or if you're on XM or something, that'll change the channels. If you press and hold, you get an equalizer and a balance fader, okay? And uh, down here, you have your front uh, defrosters, your rear and mirror defrosters, and then you do have physical controls for your temperature on either side. 
if you touch the screen down here, it of course pops up a much bigger screen. And this is the only way you can get, say for instance, to your heated seats. These are these have three stage heated seats and three stage ventilated seats on both sides. All right, right here. I'm gonna turn mine off because the, the fan is a little bit loud as they are sometimes. And then of course you can adjust your temperature from there as well. Now, the, the one thing I will that's worth pointing out here on the heated seats is that the heated seats is back and bottom, which is nice. I'm gonna turn that off before I roast. Okay, um, the, um, otherwise you have all your typical controls. You got your fan speed down here, um, and then your uh, mode setting right here. But all of this, every time you touch it, brings up another screen. Okay. Um, the, the, the screen itself, of course, has a bunch of apps in there. You do have a secondary screen over here that you can add to by using the Add to Shortcuts button. Whatever you add from here will show up on your screen. Home button brings you right back to everything. And then up here, you, of course, got your outside temperature, the clock, and then whatever... Um, whatever media you're using. So here's your FM radio, your AM radio, Sirius XM, uh, Bluetooth, and so on. So those are all right there. Now you will notice there's a little dash on the board here. There's four of them. So if I click this arrow, I can get uh, up to five different screens. So here's just kind of a blank one with just a temperature and time. This one gives me uh, the, my percentage for acceleration, fuel consumption, uh, and the angle that I'm parked at or driving at. You can get weather right here. And then the last one lets you turn your X mode on or off. Now X mode is for slow off-road driving. It's it's it'll 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 shut itself off after 25 miles an hour, but it gives you a little bit of traction and control on uh, mud or snow. Okay, uh, moving on down, you have got a wireless charger that's right here, and I did set my phone right in there, and it fit even though I have a case and a large size phone fit right in that's really really nice um, you have a 2.1 amp or two 2.1 amp chargers down here as well as a 3.5 millimeter audio input jack if you would prefer to use that okay you have uh, of course an electronic parking brake and then down here a typical uh, shifter if you want to manually shift just bring it down here knock it into manual and then you use the paddle shifters and uh, over here you have a really cool feature and that is your front camera view. This is a 180 degree front camera view. Uh, so you get some static guidelines and then this is just great. You can turn this on anytime you're parking. This is one of the things I talked about on the drive that makes it so easy to park. Okay. Right, moving on a little bit further, you have dual cup holders down here, which are nice and deep. That gives you some stability for those taller glasses. Okay, the uh, center console here, there's two storage bins here. So if I lift up the first one, I get a very small storage area. It's got a rubber floor on it, which is uh, sort of like a non-slip surface, which is really nice. So smaller things, business cards, pens, pencils, maybe your car papers will fit in there. And then if I go down a little bit further, then I have my deeper storage. And I do have a 12 volt outlet as well as a CD player. So you might have seen on the dashboard when we did the infotainment screen a minute ago that said CD. This is where your CD player is located. Okay. Um, otherwise, you've got a, a, a decent amount of storage area, not a, an overly large storage area, but, but adequate. All right. Over here, you do have this nice little storage area. I'll throw my phone up there just to kind of give you an idea. Okay. So I would think that would stay in there fairly well. It's slanted at an angle down. Hey, okay, taking a look at the glove compartment. It is dampened, it is felt lined, and it's decent size. You got a lot of, you know, a lot of thick manuals down here, but fairly decent size glove box. Moving on up to here, this uh, area right here is actually uh, a camera, and it's part of the driver focus um, technologies. And so uh, driver focus, for as far as safety goes, what it does is it monitors your face. 
uses facial recognition. Um, you can program up to five different drivers in there. And if you are looking away from the road too long, it will uh, warn you, it'll give you a, it can give you a beep, it can give you a, a physical um, symbol up on your dashboard to let you know that you need to look at the road. Hey, but the other thing it does is that it works like the memory setting buttons on the door. So I can uh, program my seat and my mirrors, and I believe I can also do climate. Not positive on that one, but I know for sure the seats and the mirrors. And when I step in the car, start it up, and it recognizes me, it will automatically adjust the seat and mirrors for me. And you can do that for up to five people. So that is what that is. Okay. Move on up to the mirror here. This is uh, an auto dimming rear view mirror. And then, of course, you have your home link buttons up in here. And then your compass up on the top right here. These two items are uh, your two stereo uh, eyesight cameras that are used for the whole eyesight safety systems. Okay. You do have um, a sunglass holder right here. You have got reading lamps on either side this is your uh, sunroof opener right here and close this is your uh, emergency button here uh, if you call this it'll it'll call Subaru and but it's for emergencies only like you've been in an accident or something this button here is for um, let's say you need roadside assistance flat tire or whatever this is what you would push and it would call the same center I believe that this one does but a, probably a different department and then they they'll, they'll help you out with uh, getting your flat tire fixture or you're out of gas or whatever all right um, of course you do have a physically sliding um, cover for your sunroof and then lastly up here the uh, both of the um, rear um, the visors are backlit with two lights on either side and they are of course telescoping all right, that being said, let's step into the back and take a look at the second row. So stepping into the second row, you got the same beautiful color combination on here. Um, you got the um, darker colors here and you've got the, the nice uh, glove brown right here. Uh, auto up and down windows, you've got a bottle holder down here again with some little storage down here. Now, stepping in here, you've got um, dual uh, stage heated seats on the outboard seats back here and you do have two 2.1 amp USB chargers. Okay? The seats themselves are very comfortable. I rode back here during the ride. I really like it. I like how high the up they are. They're like kind of like stadium seating. They're definitely higher than the front seats. Okay? You do have a nice armrest. I One of the things I like about these particular armrests is that it doesn't go all the way down to the to the seat so it gives you support at where your arm naturally crooks now the same thing is with the door uh, handles right here they're they're right at the level where your um, your elbows bend naturally and and I like that some cars put them manufacturers put them way down here and then you kind of have to almost lean left or right to get your arm out this is really nice so I like that okay dual cup holders right here it is a 60-40 split seat in the rear, so you can lay them down to get a little extra room. Now, if I pull uh, the button that's on the side, you can see it right here, okay, I can recline my seats, and I can recline to, I mean, that's that's more than I would want. That That's too much, but, um, but it's nice that they put the levers nice and in an easy spot to get to. You kind of have to crook up here to get it, but they're right there. It has dual seat mat pockets, uh, one behind each seat, um, and it's just, you know, as far as, uh, you know, headroom goes, I have got, man, I've got close to three inches of headroom. I, I'm five foot eleven and a half. Now, the seat's been adjusted way up uh, for our filming from earlier, so I've got oodles of space, but even this seat's left where I had it, and you can kind of see here if I, it'll be about here, you're not going to have any problem with leg room. Um, that is just it's very spacious back here very comfortable I do like again how high the seats are because it's it, it doesn't quite meet my where my knee is uh, but it is very close and feels uh, much more supported than in, in other cars so overall just a very 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 nice uh, comfortable second row seat Okay, lots of things to like about this car, but you know, it's just convenience. Other than all the safety that I really do like, my favorite thing is 
right here, the shelf. Easy, simple. Uh, I don't know why car manufacturers hadn't thought about it for years. I love that. That is my favorite thing. So my very favorite thing on this car is the same as it was on the other Subaru, and that's this front-facing camera. I, I just like that. I, I would use that all the time if I had it. I love being able to see what I'm pulling up to. Favorite thing. Hi, folks. I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are two guys and a ride. So we're off in the 2020 Subaru Outback. No, we're not. We're stuck in a parking lot. We're in the Subaru <laughs> Outback. Who cares if we're in a parking lot? As long as I'm in the car. So let's dive a little bit deeper into that. Uh, next up is going to be my interior view. And then after oh. that, how about you do the exterior review and I'll do the oh, interior? Oh, my interior. 